everybody, it's Kylie from Stampers Workshop. Let's just see if we're live on the page. We are. Now we've got a bit of a glare. So let me see if I can just change the light without making it too hard to see. No, still glare. Okay, well, we'll just do our best. Okay, today I thought we'd make a really cute card featuring the Counting Sheep stamp set and the sheep dies, and we'll also end up using the Messenger's dies as well. And we're using them because celebration is nearly ending, ends on the 30th of September, which means you won't be able to get these anymore. And that makes me so sad because I have loved creating with them. Today, I thought we would make this card here. It's super cute and I think you'll like it and let's get started. I'll just pop this aside. It might vary a little bit from the catalog and that's okay. You can put your own spin on it, you might have different things, you might put things in different locations, different colours, even different stamp sets. Just do what makes you feel good. Right, I'm starting off with a sheet of Granny Apple Green and I'm scoring it down the centre and then I'm going to cut it in half the other way and that gives us our card base. Now we'll pop that aside for now. Next thing I'm going to do is actually cut this card in half because this is what we're going to use for the next layer. So I'm going to cut off probably about five mil and yeah that'll probably do and then I might cut off another five here. And we'll start by adding the grass. So you want this one? Oh, if you like me, I always take all of the extra rubber away. But I've kept the insides of these little bits because you could make them into different animal patterns, such as I don't know giraffes or even cows, depending on the shape. So keep those sorts of interesting shapes. You can make great backgrounds with them. Okay, now I did this all in the one panel, but you could easily cut it up if you wanted to. We're using Granny Apple, uh, Garden Green for stamping, just to add a little extra, rather than having it tone on tone. And then just randomly stamp all over. Don't forget to also stamp off the top of the page because it just helps it look a little bit more natural. I say natural when it probably doesn't look natural at all given that it's fake grass. But no, it will. We are going to still chop this up. It's probably still a bit too orderly for me. I should have tried to make it a little bit more random. See, I've sort of got that in a row, but don't worry. By the time we chop it up a little bit, it'll be, it'll be better. Okay. So we'll pop that aside. Now I could have, I didn't bother about cutting this in any particular, um, dimension I sort of I think I did about two and a half that probably could have been a bit more and cut that in half I think the catalogue the people who designed it in the catalogue they, they probably did do it quite um, spaced quite nicely but 
Oh well. All right, next up, use your seal. And basically we're just going to attach our background. And don't worry about having them perfectly up and down because we're going to sort of make it a little bit more interesting. And this is what I love, one of the things I love about card making, obviously I love a lot about it, but like it doesn't have to be perfect. Some techniques, I guess, need to be a little bit perfect, more perfect than others, but generally just whack things down where you think that they would go. the start of our background isn't that interesting you could set it down as one panel as you like but I love the different texture that it kind of gives you different look all right so next up we're going to let's stamp this stamp the little sheep so we're going to use this one and this one They're very cute, aren't they? I kind of wish they were part of the regular range, but oh well. And then we're going to ink them up with Memento Tuxedo Black. We'll have two of those. Often when I'm creating, I'll stamp and die cut and colour more, just so that if I decide I need more or I mess up the colouring or some, I mess up the die cutting, but I'm only going to do the exact number, so let's <laughs> keep our fingers crossed that everything just works. Oh, actually, while we're doing that, I need some party hats, so let's grab another block and stamp the party hats as well. Do you all end up with ink all over you or is it just me? Please say it's not just me. Um, one, two, three. Oh, I'll do a fourth. I'm not sure how many I'm gonna use. Okay, I'll clean up all my stamps later, but I do like to make sure that I put the lid on my ink and put it out of the way. Okay, I think for, let's do the party hats. I think I'm going to do um, light flirty flamingo and light pumpkin pie and just leave it in those two colours. I'm not going to worry about shading. It's such a small area and I think it's going to look fine just as it is. So on two of them, I will colour the polka dots with the light pumpkin pie and on two of them, I will colour the background with the light punk pumpkin pie and then it's just a really pretty soft colour pattern colour display. Now if you wanted to you could certainly add the darks and, and do some blending and what have you but it's such a small area it will be fine having said that we will do a little bit more blending when it comes to the shape so for the I'm gonna use the light smoky slate and the dark smoky slate but really I'm not gonna go overboard with this either I'm going to just color in It's just going to be a little bit of blending on the feet and for the rest of it I'm really just kind of going to add a little bit of grey. The grey kind of helps the white pop if you know what I mean and I've done it under the, the leg there because I kind of want it to look a little bit shadowed but really I'm not going to do anything too fancy. And you can see here the designer of the stamp has actually given you 
the lines to help you work out where you should put put the shadows it just makes it really really easy but I do tend to add a few in other places but just don't overthink it do you guys like to color I do and I like I like it when it's sort of I don't have to overthink it and I can just add a bit of color and it still looks good oh, hopefully it'll look good so that's the light smoky slate now I'm just gonna add a little bit of the dark here just to give a little bit more interest Uh, do you guys do that too? Like I'll be colouring along and, and I think I'll have done everything and then I realise that there's just one little part of the design that I've forgotten to colour and usually it's after I've put everything away that I suddenly go, oh yeah, I missed that. Okay, so now we've got all the grey done, hopefully all the grey done. Now this is, now I'm going to do the face and the the legs, uh, face and the, yeah, the legs. So I'm, I'm gonna use a weird color combination here. You'll think I'm weird, but it, it will work, trust me. So I'm actually going to use light and dark petal pink, ivory, and light highland heather. Yes, I'm going to use purple. It will work though, unless, unless I get nervous and botch it, but no, it will work. So I just start with adding a layer of the, and this is how I also color a Caucasian face as well. So just add the light petal pink. Now sometimes I would say don't worry, do one bit at a time so the ink stays wet and you can sort of manipulate it a bit longer but I'm not even going to worry with it this time. Now we're going to use a little bit of the light Highland Heather and I just usually put it sort of where it's shadowed, just a touch. Don't go too heavy, in fact I don't even know if you can really see it I'll, when I, once I've finished. You see, just added such a tiny little drop. So I do that to all of the areas. This is where I might sort of say, keep blending it first, but whilst it's all still wet, but I think we'll still be fine. I hope you'll be able to see what I see when it's finished, that depth of color. And then I sort of blend it out with a little bit of the ivory. Just a little bit more. And you start to get that little bit more of a, a shadow richness to the, to the area. Um, you do have to sort of be a little bit careful too when you're blending this out because it is a small area and it's going to bleed if you add too much ink. It's a really fine line. Sometimes I botch it, sometimes it comes up really well. Don't worry if it bleeds though, seriously. Like, just, no one will care. They'll just be so impressed that you've done something like this. Then once again, I'm just gonna blend it out a little bit further with the dark petal pink. And I might sort of add now a little bit more of this. Oh, see, there's always one I forget. Oh, wait. Let me just finish the rest of it. So I might add it more down the leg of just this colour. Just to have a little more interest under the eyes. And if you have any questions about this, I'm happy to answer them. Now we just need to fix that one I forgot to do. See, there's always one. There's always one. But 
usually always be found it before we've put everything away. I guess that's a that's a start. Okay, and then we sort of blend all of that back out again with the light petal pink again. So you can see, I hope you can see, it might be a bit hard on the camera with the light. Just adds that, I guess, richness. I know you might be saying, why have I done all the, gone to all this effort for the face when I didn't worry about the, the wool? I don't know. But I hope you can see that interest like I can see it. Okay, what we are going to do before we move on is use the colour lifter. Because I actually do want to soften these grey lines. So I usually just colour randomly all over it just to soften it and only on the wool area. I forgot the shadow under the ear here. And let's do this one. And that should be... all of it done. So that's our colouring done and dusted. So now it's a matter of die cutting it. I like to cut them apart so that I can position them around on my die cut machine where I want them. And I also tend to use post-it notes to hold them in place. I have, a, I have this which I get from Officeworks and it's just post-it note tape on a roll and I buy a couple of these at a time because they're so good and you can pull off as much or as little as you like and I use it to hold my dies in place and I also use it for some of them for masking like whatever I need it for basically okay so here are the dies so we need those for the sheep and we need the party hat as well now, these ones will actually fit on my mini, so we'll, we'll use that so you can actually see. So start with, I do find, <laughs> I don't know if you, when you're being watched with these, they move. They might not move any other time, but as soon as somebody's watching you, they'll move. Okay, put that in place. And then the last one. Move that up a little bit so we can fit all three on. in place hope that I haven't knocked any of them because you can still if you like me you can still have them move even though you've used post-it notes okay that side. Oh, so cute so cute and then pop that aside Oh, aren't they, darling? <laughs> and oh, that one just fell out. That's handy. So we're going to need to do another of the party hats. My plate has started to warp a little bit. That's partly why I'm using the post-it note too and it's also why it might warp again even though you've got it in place it just happens you just have to not stress too much if it does okay while we're doing that actually I've got we might die cut 
a couple of other things. We need some grass and we're going to do them out, make them out of granny apple, uh, garden green and we're going to use the clouds. So while we're die cutting and there's room on our, on our board, on our cutting mat, we might cut a couple of them as well. Let's put the lid back on. Uh oh, did you just see it? I just moved it. You can see I also didn't tape these in place, the grass in place, and that's because it doesn't really matter if they move around. They're not, we're not cutting out a, a particular drawing. We're just cutting out some cardstock, so if it moves, it's fine. Okay. Aren't they sheep just darling? You can see why I want to keep coloring with them. Now you can get this for free during celebration, which ends on the 30th with a qualified, qualifying order. The sheep, you need a $90 order and the dyes, you need a $90 order. So all up, you'd need a $180 order. But um, I think you'll have a lot of enjoyment from it. And there's always stuff we need with crafting. So let's line up another one while we're doing that. We've got another party hat, we'll pop that aside. And let's get another party hat sorted. Pop that in place. And stick it down. Now I've got more room again, so what we might do is I need to cut a couple of the fences. So I will get one of those on as well. And if you notice, I sort of put them off. Don't, they don't have to be lined up straight. In fact, it's better if they're not because otherwise you get sort of like a, a road a speed hump and it will go ka -tung, ka -tung, and it's really loud and it's not so great for you for your die. So if you're going to be cutting something with a straight edge, try and angle it a little bit just to help it go through a little bit easier. Okay, so we've got the first fence. And that's stuck in. So I usually just, if you've got a pick tool, you could use that, but I don't know where I put mine. I do have one. Pop it there. And then we've done some more grass, so we'll pop them there. There. We'll get them lined up for another another pass and then that hopefully should be enough of the grass. get another party hat going through and another fence cut another bit of cardstock to size if you're using the bigger die cutting machine it's kind of easier in a way because you can more you can get more lined up, but I think this will be this will be sufficient. Just watch that you don't have too much of the cardstock poking over the edge, because it will. I've done that before, and then you wind it through, and it catches and knocks everything. It's, it's all right if it's just on card, plain cardstock, but if you've got a design that you're trying to cut out. Now, I don't, you can't see this, but I might not have positioned it quite in the right spot to cut out the fence. I didn't. Fortunately it will stay there so we'll we'll run it through again. Because the plates are tapered, I don't know if you can see that, if it goes if your die sits past that line, it doesn't have that pressure so it's not going to cut. Now it's a that's awesome when you're trying to do fancy techniques where you only want to partially die cut. But in this case, I actually do want to cut the whole thing. 
and I just missed it when I was lining it up so that it's pretty easy it's still stuck in in place so we'll run it through again and while that's there we'll also get we're going to cut a balloon out as well and I think we'll do that to match our our flirty flamingo colouring so we'll pop that in as a well so this is when it's like there's a lot of die cutting but if you kind of think about how you're designing you can do what I'm doing and sort of cut a few things at a time and it just makes it go a little bit faster I think that should be it for now I might need another fence though Oh, maybe we'll just maybe we won't worry we'll just work with two fences and now you can see it's completely cut so worth doing it we'll put our balloon aside we'll push out our pieces poke in the holes if it sticks and uh, right so now we'll move that out of the way and that out of the way what are we up to well we have everything for the scene but we do need a sentiment and I think for the sentiment we're going to use so glad it's your birthday I've been using this sentiment a lot and sometimes I will actually um, stamp it you can see you can see here um, stamp it on different colors and then I just cut it apart and use the different pieces I like but we're going to do it all in, in the one go so let's find a block I think I'm using all my small blocks so we'll just pop it on this one and we're going to stamp on a little bit of pool party now as I said to you the other day if you still have your embossing buddy or powder tool or anything like that don't get rid of it like never you need it I wish Stampin' Up would bring it back and if they do get it it just helps with static and because you don't want your embossing powder to stick in the wrong spot I look I still have trouble even when I'm using it but it just helps minimize it um, okay so get your Versamark ink it up I always like to get my embossing powder ready too. <laughs> you know, if it's a particularly warm day or something. Hold it down, lift it up. That looks pretty good. And add the embossing powder. Ah, I pressed down a bit too hard. You can just see a line. And I was telling you in the last one, I like to keep a, a brush on hand so that if I do get powder when it, where I don't want it, like there, I can just wipe it away okay we'll pop this I always recommend to putting your embossing powder away as soon as you finish because it does go everywhere in my experience it could just be me and we don't want that especially when you apply heat it will set now it's going to get noisy for a second we want your heat tool to heat up and um, so if you can't hear me, it will only be for a second. It's always a thrill watching that melt. I know everyone talks about it being the gateway to to stamping embossing. I think it's true. Okay, now this is another one I'm using all the time. I kind of when I first got it, I knew it was all attached, but and I kind of thought I hate that, and I still hate it. Having said that, and I, I didn't use it for a while because I kind of kept thinking, ah, oh, I have to use it in the one, but you don't. I usually now cut my cardstock down. And then I just position 
the dies over each hole until I work out which one I like. I actually like this one. And then I use my favourite post-it note tape to hold it in place. And sometimes this one has to go on my other machine, so I'm afraid I can't do that under the camera. But it'll only take a second. So it won't be a moment. We just line it up. I thought I'd knocked it, so I just had to check the positioning. And then roll it through. Knock through and then Anything else that's cut out, like here, take off your, um, that might be not worth keeping, but it might be, so recycle that. And then ha I have a look at here, and if there's anything that's worth keeping, they're not. That could be, that heart certainly is. I just throw it into the, um, die pack so that if I'm looking for a heart or something I can just go there because it's ready. Okay I think we're ready now to pull it all together so we'll get our background back again and let's put it together. Now you could do what I've done previously which is actually die cut three of the fences so that I had the fence all the way around, but I think it'll look cute just in the middle. Um, are you like, I, I also really don't like, <laughs> I don't like using liquid glue. I tend to get it everywhere, but for this card, I figured it was probably the easiest way to do it. So that's why we're using it. Oh, I should have had that a bit more centered. Never mind. What's done is done. Now turn all your grass upside down. Get a bit of adhesive. I kind of do this at, at the one time too, but if yours dries out really quickly, just do it one at a time. Because I know some environments are a little bit warmer than others and they tend to dry really quickly. Um, at this stage, it's still pretty mild here in WA. So, oh, the other thing to watch out when you're doing this, I do it all the time, is because I have everything glued here. I then usually, it's not, it wouldn't be surprising, let me put it this way, if I then got my fingers or my palms stuck to one of the pieces. So if you've ever done that, you're not alone. So we're just positioning the grass and I love that you can use it as clouds or you can use it as grass it just sort of makes it a bit more versatile and I love it when we can sort of use them in different ways it's more bang for the buck so to speak okay so now we've got all of the grass in position let's use the sheep now now I want the sheet to be popped up and I want the, I don't want everything else to be popped up. So we'll get them ready. So for that you'll need your stamp and dimensionals. If you've got your mini ones as well, use those. I'm not sure. Ah, I do have some of those out. So let's get going with that. Now I've said this before. If you have never watched my stuff, I tend to go a little bit overboard with adhesive. I know that. <laughs> I can't see it ever changing though. I've tried. But um, I just want it all stuck down properly, you know. You notice I sort of started to put the big one there, but it didn't fit, so I'll use a mini one in a minute. I'm not worrying about the legs hanging, <laughs> they'll be fine. Okay, and then we'll 
and put one on the back of the okay and we'll just put one there okay then the fun stuff oh, I get these things everywhere where's the ran most random place you've ever had one of these I've had them stuck to clothing I've had them on obviously on the carpet but in different rooms so they've obviously fallen on the floor and I've walked on them and they've uh, then been carried to a different room uh, I, I know a lot of people also use the take your pick for these as well to just sort of stab them and make them pop but for now the uh, nails will do Okay, so now we're going to sort of position our sheep. This one's sort of going to be over here. I'm having this one like it's jumping over the fence. And this one's sort of, sort of going to be jumping up as well. And We'll stick the balloon in his hand. Okay, and now we need some party hats. Now in the centre, I think we might only use the three. Oh no, what do you, I don't know, shall we pop one there? I think we'll leave that one till last to decide what to do. So pop it up. Just needs one, just needs one. Oh, maybe we will. So we take off the adhesive. I think we will put one on each of them. one on this one as well and one on this one that's sort of because it's jumping it's come off oh my gosh they're so cute aren't they cute and our sentiment now in the example they had the sentiment up here but because I've got everything sort of top heavy I need to sort of balance it down below so I'm going to get some more standard dimensionals and but we're going to put them down below this time and I think we'll put them put the sentiment back here and I think we might add another pop pop it up a little bit even these, these um, stamping dimensionals are going to be a little bit large for where I need to put it. So I'm just going to cut it in half. And then I'll just pop the other half back onto the sheet. You can actually cut it on the sheet if you want. And then pop it in place. Pull the back off. And I want just a little dab of adhesive, liquid adhesive on the bottom here. Because that's going to stick onto our sentiment. So that's really cute, but it needs one more thing. We ink of Stella. This stuff's awesome. And I think her party card needs a bit of bling. So we're going to put some on all of the party hats. And we'll add some to the balloon. going to be nice and shimmery. I'm not going to worry about the string, balloon string. I don't mind that it sort of looks a little different colour. And then I think with the sheep you can do one of two things. Sorry, that brush looks like a little bit dirty. You can do one of two things. 
colouring the whole sheet like I'm going to do here. Or you could just um, highlight the sort of like the shadowed areas for a little bit of a, a touch there. But I just thought because it's a birthday card and you know it's always fun to add bling. So just add a bit of bling to all of them. I do recommend doing the bling as the last step because otherwise it can sort of get all over your fingers. It's better than regular glitter, but if you're like me and you start handling it, see, it gets all over. <laughs> so, get that all, all shimmery. And that is our card. What I would do now is finish the inside so you can do that however you would like so I would generally take a bit of cardstock and I might cut another fence and have another sheep jumping over it and that will go on the inside just to make it a little bit more interesting but I'll leave that for now so that's our card and it's a case of this one on page 11 of the celebration catalogue this runs until the 30th of September. So if you're interested in either the Counting Sheep stamp set or the end or the die set, you can only get them until the end of the month and only with a qualifying order. So you need to spend $90 to be able to choose one of them or 180 to be able to choose both of them. Um, but they're fun and you'll love them and I've certainly had a great time creating with them and I hope you've had a great time watching as well. So thanks for joining us and have a great day. You can find anything you need at stampersworkshop.com.com. Thank you. Bye.